Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. In this video, I'm going to cover clause 7.4, communication. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand and implement into your own organization or industry. Okay, let's get started. Let's take a look at what clause 7.4 wants us to do. This clause is broken down into three subclauses. The first subclause is 741 general, and it states that the organization shall establish, implement, and maintain the processes needed for internal and external communications relevant to the environmental management system, including A, on what it will communicate, B, when to communicate, C, with whom to communicate, D, how to communicate. It then goes on to say that when establishing its communication processes, the organization shall take into account its compliance obligations, ensure that environmental information communicated is consistent with information generated within the environmental management systems and is reliable. And finally, it states that the organization shall respond to relevant communications on its environmental management system. Here's a little tip for you. You can follow clause 4.2 for understanding the needs and expectations of interested parties. This will give you a head start on what to communicate when and with whom. For instance, you might have a regulatory body that needs quarterly updates, that's the when, on your environmental impact and sustainability efforts, that's the what. You'll be sending this to a designated officer within that organization, that's the with whom. You'll have to decide how you will communicate this, perhaps through an online portal or a formal report. And who within your organization will be responsible for this communication. ISO 14001 places a strong emphasis on documenting your communication procedures, especially if they relate to legal requirements or compliance obligations. This is emphasized by the final sentence in this subclause, which says that the organization shall retain documented information as evidence of its communications as appropriate. Now, let's move on to subclause 742, internal communication. This subclause states, the organization shall A, internally communicate information relevant to the environmental management system among the various levels and functions of the organization, including changes to the environmental management system as appropriate. B, ensure its communication processes enables persons doing work under the organization's control to contribute to continual improvement. This part of the clause wants you to make sure that environmental information is communicated within your organization. Basically, you've got to share what's going on environmentally with your team from top level management down to the shop floor. It's a two way street. So remember, feedback from employees is just as important as sending messages down the chain of command. This is essential as open and effective communication ensures that everyone is on the same page when it comes to environmental objectives, policies, and performance. This could be done through team meetings, newsletters, or even a dedicated internal website, whatever is relevant to your way of communication internally. And finally, let's touch on clause 743, external communication. This subclause states that the organization shall externally communicate information relevant to the environmental management system as established by the organization's communication processes and as required by its compliance obligations. 
This course asks you to figure out your strategy for communicating with external parties. That could be anyone from regulators, suppliers, customers, or the general public. Let's break it down. If you're dealing with suppliers, maybe you want to communicate your sustainability goals and ask how they can align with them. If it's a regulatory body, you might be sending over compliance data or impact assessments. And if it's the general public, you could be sharing your environmental milestones through social media or an annual sustainability report. The point is you decide what makes sense for your organization, but make sure you've got a record of it. So there you go. We've covered the full spectrum of communication under ISO 14001's Clause 7.4. With a bit of planning and documentation, you can ensure that you're communicating effectively both internally and externally, all while keeping your environmental impacts in check. Thanks so much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Order to Training Online is your one-stop shop for professional training. If you're interested in mastering even more of this standard, head over to our website and enroll in one of our courses. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and drop a comment or question below. Your career transformation starts with a single click, so join me in making the world a better place. Mm -hmm.